Okay, um, I'm going to explain the epicycloids and also we are going to discuss um, the Archimedean spiral and the helix. Once I discuss those three uh, parts of this uh, Loki, it means we are done with the Loki and you must make sure you understand from involutes, the uh, things we discussed last time, and uh, cycloids. Epicycloid, we are dealing with a rolling circle on a curvy path. It means that you have been given, for example, this is the path, and they tell you that there is a road and there is a rolling ball, which I'm going to put in black. Okay, this is the rolling ball. Uh, the diameter you are going to be given for the rolling ball. They will give you the angle. Now, they give you the angle in which the ball is rolling. They give you the radius R. And they give you the radius of a rolling ball, which is small r. So what we do is to divide the circle in 12 divisions. We know how to divide the circle in 12 divisions. And then put the compass here. Make sure that you know the angle nicely. So let's say I'm going to use that, um, that angle. Okay. What we're going to do is to divide the circle in 12 divisions and then from the center here to each and every division you're going to draw you know, uh, the arcs. So from here to there, green is construction lines. Okay, then from here, So what you do is you make sure that from the division take the line to the center and from the center you draw an arc. So from the division to the center, then from the center you draw the arc. And this is our last one. So the center line is here. We can follow the center line. Then at that point we have to draw the circle also because it's when it's finishing the motion. So I'm going to draw a circle at the end of the motion. So let's say the circle is sitting here. Like that. And those lines, you must make sure that they come to the other side of the circle, like this. Doesn't matter how you number this circle, we usually follow the position of P. So what I'm going to say now, I'm going to assume that P is sitting here. Let's assume now that P is sitting here. Alright, that is the initial position of P where the ball is here or the circle is here. So this is the position of P. And remember with the cycloids, I said that the position of P, the center is the main center here. So that P has got its center here. So what we are going to do, we are not, no longer working with pi times diameter here because the rod is a curvy rod. This rod is a, a curvy rod. So you need to divide the divisions here, which are the angular divisions. And those angular divisions, we solve using this theta equals to, we are going to take small r divided by big R, times 360 degrees divided by 12. That is the formula. What is this formula? It's to get the angular divisions. When I was teaching the cycloids, I did pi times diameter. And then we had to divide this into, you know, pi times diameter, like that. Then we had to get those lines. Here it's straight lines. But here we need to divide in angles from here. From the first line here to the next line, that is the theta. So you are going to work with a protractor. The answer you are going to get here. So let's take, for instance, this is radius of 20. And that R may be 60 radius. So you are going to say 20 over 60, all right, times 30 degrees. Obviously, 360 divided by 12 is, um, is 30 degrees. So you are going to 
divide, let's see, 20 divided by 60 times 30, it's 10, all right? So I'm getting the answer for the theta equals to 10 degrees. So what it means is you're going to take your protractor, and the way you take the protractor must be in such a way that you don't mess up. I want to explain nicely how you're going to hold the, the protractor. You know the protractor is, uh, is like this. And it's got a center there. This point of the protractor, you have to make sure, let me just use this point. This top point here, X, on the protractor, must be the point that will be here. X. So this point of the protractor, X, must be the point X on the center there. And then because this is KV, the center line here is KV, not straight. So let me draw that one nicely. We are saying the center line here is a KV center line. We are saying that this curve of the center line must be this curve here. And this point X here should be that point X. And this line here, this center line here, should be this center line here. So if this is Y line, make sure that your Y line is this one. So you hold the, the you know, protractor in such a way that you put it like that. And this X is here. And then you are going to mark the degrees from here. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, you know, until 90, obviously. But we need 10. That is 10 degrees. So 10 degrees from this line. And make sure that this part of the protractor, you know, sits on the KV part of your center line here. And this will be our X. This is X. That is X. So from X going that side, I'm going to measure this angle of 10 degrees. So let's take for instance, I mark 10 degrees maybe here. From here to here, 10 degrees. Then I must draw a line from the center here through there. That is this 10 degrees. 10 degrees from here to there, that is the formula we use. Then don't do with the protractor throughout. What you're going to do is take your compass now, open from here to here. This is 10 degrees. You take that distance, start marking here, you know, mark, 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 maybe mark on the center line. I think our center line is here, not that one, this one. If, for instance, the last 10 degrees did not reach here, maybe it ended here, you have to draw a circle on the next division. I mean, if the division of 10, you mark here, you mark here, you mark there, you mark here, and when you come here, it's exceeding here. Maybe it's coming there. Please draw the last circle here on this line. So it means that you're going to extend. But if it comes exactly on the division, use this as your last point. Don't use any other extra point. Only if the division goes over, over this angle that was given. They will give you this angle in the exam. Whatever the angle of the circle is rolling in. Remember why we are using 360? Because a circle can roll around 360 degrees. But in this instant, it's just rolling in this angle. So in this angle ro that it's going to roll, how many divisions are we having? Obviously, it's not 12. 12 will be in 360 degrees. So whatever this angle will be, we are only having one, two, three, four, five, six degrees, or uh, six angles, or six subdivisions. So we are going to draw these uh, lines. Okay, ignore this one. This was for the radius. Okay. Construction lines, and make sure you just draw all the way into the center line. Don't go over the center line. Once we do that, the next thing to do is to start marking now. And what determines the marking is the position of P. If this is P, it means that this is number one. This is two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Back to P. What it means is P will be marked on this arc. Number one is on this arc. Number two and six, one is with seven. Seven and one will be using this arc. P and eight will be using this arc. Two and six will be using this arc. We mark on that arc. Five and three, we are going to mark on this arc. Lastly is number four, here at the bottom. And then number 10, nine and 11 on that one. So it was falling because obviously rotation is that way. It's, it's rotating that way. Why is it rotating that way? It is because the rod is here. This is the path on which the ball is rolling. So there's no way you can say it's rolling that way. It cannot roll backwards because there's no rod here. So the only rotation is clockwise. So from P it was falling down. Then it will start rising. Then fall. It depends what's the angle given in the exam. So let's now mark those positions. Center one. This is center for P. Here. Then the next division that you marked here is center one. Center for arc one. Center two. Center three. Center four. Center five. And then lastly, center number six. That one. You are going to take your compass. Put your compass on center one using the radius of a rolling circle. So radius is 20. Open your compass to 20 and put your compass on C1 and mark on, let's say this is the radius. That is for P. When I go to C1, I need to mark on the center for 1. So it's going to be somewhere here on the arc 1. The same radius of 20 don't change. When you go to C2, you are going to mark on down here on 2. That is the arc for 2. Same radius, go to C3, you are going to mark on a 3 down here on the arc of 3. There is arc of 3. When we go to C4, we mark at the bottom. So from there, it's going to come somewhere at the bottom here for 4. That is the lowest point. So when you come to C5, you expect it to start rising again. So with the same radius for the circle, come to C5, but it's rising, so you are going to mark on number 5. Let's say the 5. 5 is with 3. You can see 5 is with 3. So when you are on C5, you are going to mark on this arc here. With 5. Then we go to C6. C6, you have to mark on the next level. Obviously, it's rising. It must be on a division. Why is it on the division? Because apparently a P was initially given at a, pos a division. It must always end at a division. So if they ask you to trace the cycloid or the involute of this rolling uh, circle, you will start by using now freehand or a, a flexi curve. It's past there, then down there. From there it starts to rise, obviously. Then it comes there. There is the low key. If ever they gave you a cycloid. Please remember the formula. And what I'm going to do on the other side is to show you another example briefly of a combined cycloid and epicycloid, which you might also find in the exam. In the exam, they can give us this situation. They tell us that there is a rolling ball coming straight here. Okay? They can say that it was coming straight from point what to point what, and this is a, a ball that is rolling. When it reached there, okay, then it started going in a curvy way. Maybe that way. Then at that point here, They'll give you this, and they give you that. So what am I giving you there? I'm giving you a situation where it started as a cycloid. 
then it ended as epi epicyclot combined it's not an issue it's not a big problem what you need to do there now is to make sure that you understand the concepts at that point the ball was changing their direction so you need to draw the rolling ball there at that instant the ball was also coming here so we are going to do the center divide the circle in 12 divisions and then we are going to do pi times diameter don't use this length to divide in 12 no whatever the circle is in this stage you are going to work with pi d pi times diameter cyclone here we are going to work with the formula as long as we know what is this r they'll give you the radius from there big r and the radius of a rolling ball which is a small r they'll give us so here once you do pi times diameter you have to divide that line let's say the circumference ends there Divide this in 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Then start to dividing that way. You see? Like that. Like that. Construction line. That is on the a a cycloid. Then once you do that, you are going to draw the vertical lines. To, go, to get the C1, C2, you know, like that. So the only points you are going to use is until the center there. Those ones we are going to disregard. Coming to this side of the epicycloid, you are going to work with that, uh, uh, you know, formula. And if it's 10 degrees angle, you are going to measure, okay? You are going to put your compass on the center. So let's first divide, do these divisions. You are going to do those. This is for the epicycloid. Then when we come here, you have the center. From there, you take it from that side. There. Also, there is going to be an arc here. Next one on the center line. This one from there. This one from here. This one from here. Then at that point, we draw a circle. It's finishing the motion, so you have to draw. This circle should be construction. Make sure that the circle is faint. The only line that should be that is the Loki. So this one is construction line, faint. And this circle here is faint. Construction line, which I must also do here. At that point, I'm going to draw that circle. And make sure that you extend those down there. Alright, so we need the angle. I'm going to use 10, even this side is fine. The angle is 10 degrees. Then I'm going to take a protractor, X is here, and mark 10 degrees. That is the first division, 10. Then I take that distance, I start marking on the center. Another one, there, there, there. You know, it can end here. It's fine. Take them there to the center. Green is construction line. Okay. So you have those divisions. Now we need to plot um, the locus or the cycloid. Epicycloid versus uh, epicycloid and the cycloid. If we say position of P is here, I'm changing now. Or we can say here. That's apparently the position of P. If P is here, one is here, clockwise, remember it's going clockwise, the road is here, okay? So the road should be a bit dark, this should be a bit dark, that is the path. So, P is here, the center for P is here. This is center 1, center 2, center 3, center 4, center 5, center 6, center 7, center 8. When we come here, center 1, center 2, center 3, center 4, center 5, center 6, you know, like that. You can have four divisions or six. It depends on the angle you found here. That will determine how many divisions that, that side. 
So if P is sitting here, 1 is here, 2 is here, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it means that the line for 1 is here and the arc for 1 is there on that side. You know, this is a straight line that is an arc. When I come to center 1, using the radius of a circle at C1, I'm going to mark on 1. At C1, you mark on 1 because it's clockwise. So from here, it rises there. When you go to C2 with the radius of the circle, you're marking on 2. When you go to C3, mark on 3. Let's say there. When you're on C4, mark on 4. When you're on C5, mark on 5. On C6, 6. That's a line for 6. Radius does not change. What is changing is the centers. Okay? So already you can see we have used C6. We marked on 6. C7, it will start falling. So you mark on 7 here. And then you come on C8, you mark on 8 on the division there. That is the line, the line of 8, straight line. Okay, it's here, not on the arc. Follow the straight line because we are finishing up. This was 8. So it's here, not on the arc. So position of P is here. Apparently P is sitting there. So how are we going to do it? You start plotting from there, from P. It starts to rise. Okay? Then from there it falls straight to P. That's how it's going. Okay? So it starts from P, then you go up until there. From here we start now using the, the epicycloid part. The cycloid part, we are done with it. To use the epicycloid, it means if P is here, its center is here. That is the center for P, this one. Center 1. So P, it means that it is on this arc. That's the arc of P. So center 1 will be in the, same, in the next line because it was falling. So when I come to center 1, with the same radius of the circle, I'm going to mark from center 1 here. You are going to mark exactly on 1. So it's from P here, then you mark on 1. That's center 1 with that radius. So from there it falls to 1. Then when you come to center 2, you are going to mark on 2. So it's P, center 1, center 2. Center 2 you mark here. Center 3, put your compass on center 3 and mark on 3. Okay? Center 4, you are going to mark at the bottom. Center 4, it's on the lowest point. When we go to center 5, it starts to rise. Next line from center 5, here. Then you come to center 6, it's rising up. You can see that it's coming that way. So center 6 will give you the point here in the next level. P will be there. If we trace the locus or the epicycloid, it's going that way. Free hand, it fall. It had to fall down to there. Then it starts to rise from here. Okay? From there to there. That is the initial position of P. And then we are done. Remember, examiner can either give you a complete cycloid or a complete epicycloid. I've seen questions like this. Start going through past papers. What you are going to see is things like this. Rolling voice here. Then they'll tell you that, okay, what is happening here, it's rolling that way. Then it starts rolling that way. Then rolling that way. You know, curves. So what you do is, if the boy is rolling, you need to know, obviously, the angle of rotation, you know, like that. There will be a ball somewhere there. Here, you need to know there, and then there will be a ball somewhere here, when it's starting another motion inside here. Then you are going to have another one there, okay? That's how you are going to do it. This part you are going to draw like this divisions you know the way we do and then do the angles calculate then when we come here the center is there this is this one the next center will be going that way you know this way that way that way that way using that center that is for this then do the divisions also there to get your c1 c2 when we come here it's rolling to the other side so we need to know where is the center here 
you know it's going that way this one coming down from there also they'll give you the angle not straight sitting like that okay then here you already have the lowest part you are going to the next one the next one as long as you divide the circle in 12 divisions you know that is how it's gonna be so it's complete epicycloid but you can see how many arcs it's rolling in until the last position so the angle is gonna be the same throughout just mark 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 with the same angle here it's gonna be going that way to the center there the procedure is the same as long you know where you are as long you know what you are marking as long you know the position of p for sure there's especially here we saw p was here there's no way someone can start marking up we know it was in the process of falling so if p is here and the arc of p is here you can't mark again on p you mark on the next arc which is c1 which we marked there we marked next line next next then starts rising you know up until there we follow the levels and then we can just stress the the, uh, the cycloid or the epicycloid. I'm sure I've made a point. I'm going to explain um, Archimedean spiral. That's another part the examiner can ask you. He can ask you to draw an Archimedean spiral. And it's very easy. And from there I'll do the helix. And the Loki is done. So if they ask us to do a comedian spiral, they are asking us to trace the locus of the point that is revolving around a fixed point, a, that is revolving around a fixed point. For instance, we have point P, and point P will be revolving around here, you know, like a spider web. It can't move away, or it can be revolving there. It depends where the examiner wants, okay? So what they give you is the radius, the maximum diameter it's going to revolve to. This diameter will be given to you. And then they say point P is revolving on this fixed point, P. Divide this radius here, the half in 12 divisions. Divide that radius into whatever the diameter that this will be. Divide this radius in 12 divisions, which means that we need the line then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, twelve. The last one connects to the last one there. We know how to divide the line. So do twelve divisions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We can put another one here. Twelve. Yeah. Once you divide in twelve, this is one. Come here with a compass, okay? Divide first the bigger circle also in 12 divisions, okay? We divide the bigger one in 12 divisions and then draw lines through the center to the division there, through the, the center to the division. So all this is construction line. So if they say it revolves anti-clockwise, it's revolving counterclockwise. That way is the revolving direction. So this will be one, this is two, this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So for one revolution or one convolution, the examiner uses this term. You only have a circle once. If they say two, two revolutions. If they say two revolutions, you are going to extend this radius and have a copy here. From here to here, then extend this here and mark also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then extend those lines if it's two revolutions or one and a half. It depends with the question. If the examiner says one and a half, you are going to have other 12, uh, 6 here. Half of uh, 12, 6. Then we end here, one and a half. But two, you have to extend this radius. You take it out and mark 12 divisions and extend your line. So we'll try to get there. But for now, let's do one revolution, which is this one, which ends here to here. 
Open your campus from the center because P is here. Center one, center two, center three. From here to center one, draw an arc. From here to center two, draw an arc. From there to center three, draw an arc and two, three. From there to division four, draw an arc and two division four. From there to five and two five. We are using the center and just drawing arcs and two the whatever division. If it's seven, you go all the way and two, seven. If it's eight, you come there. That one, you come there. So I'm going to fix this side. Then we are here you use the compass and two eleven. The last one is twelve. This is that one I fixed. You can see now that the next thing is to uh, this is Archimedean spiral, not epicycloid. That is the Archimedean spiral. P is here, from P to here, to here, to here, you are going to trace those points. That's why I said draw and to a certain number. When you are on number one and two one, arc and two two. So there is the Archimedean spiral. Freehand sketch. Then you go there. Then we come here. Then 12. That is for one revolution. Okay, one revolution. When they say two revolution, you are going to continue. Let's get let's go to one and a half, not two. Two will be too big. So I'm going to say one and a half. Then we just end, let's say 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, and two here. So open your campus from here to here. You draw an arc there. From here to here, you draw an arc there. From there to there, you draw an arc and two, three. From here to here, you draw an arc and two, there. From there to there, you draw an arc and two, there. From there to there, that's the last one, half. They're asking you for one and a half. If it's 12, you'll still continue. So for one and a half, I'm here. I'll go here, I'll go there, 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 and there. So continue plotting that way, that way, okay? That is uh, an arc middle spiral uh, going through one and a half uh, revolution or convolution, okay? Then there was a question in the exam that the uh, examiner once asked, but also not difficult. He gave two circles. There was one circle of 80 diameter, and there was a circle inside here of 20 diameter. And what he said is the P, yeah, what he said is that P is here. Point P was initially there. So it still did not, you know, make a big difference if P is here. So you have to divide this portion here in 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 2, 12. All right. Then what you would have done is to open your campus, you know, do the divisions like that. The same way I've done. Do that way. Then from here to here is P. From here to there is 1. From there to 2. From there to 3. From there to 4. You know, like that and continue. So it means that it's not revolving in that center, but that center, and you would have taken that, you see, something like that. It would have come that way. If you were given two diameters, he gave 20 diameter, and he gave the 80 diameter, and he gave P at the end of the diameter 20. So divide that piece by 12 or 8. If you divide it in 8 divisions, make sure the circle is also divided in 8. If I divide in 12 here, the circle also must be in 12. And then it's like that. So don't feel like, you know, it's difficult if they give us two, you know, they give us two circles. It's just shifting the revolving point. 
We are saying at median spirals when a circle is revolving around a fixed point, and this was a fixed point here. In this case, they gave us a fixed point there. So it's not a problem. You can still uh, get that one right. The last part I need to explain now is the helix. I don't think it's a big issue with the helix because you guys have been doing in pictorial. You have done uh, pictorial threads, you know, right hand and left hand helix. So I'll be doing the helix. I'll do at that point. What they do on the helix, they give you the pitch. The pitch is from the start of a thread to the end of a thread. So let's say this is the center and this is the bottom and they give me the height is here, okay? You have to draw the semicircle. This semicircle equals to the a, a nominal diameter, we call it nominal diameter. And to the last point there, close. If it's a right hand helix, so I am dealing with a right hand helix. Right hand helix starts from left to right. So if it's right hand, make sure from that edge here, you draw a line. This line should be equals to pi diameter, diameter of this, which is nominal diameter. Then you measure from here to there. Then divide it in 12 divisions. Okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And to the last one. Join the last one to there. I think you can see now that you need to know this format. Examiner wants to see how you are dividing a line using correct methods. Once you do the divisions, bring them to this line here. Horizontal line which is equal to the height. If it's a pitch, one pitch or one thread, one helix is from one to there which is equal to the pitch. Okay? Now, you are going to draw these lines that way. Because we have divided pi times diameter in 12. So now take your lines up. All the 12 lines must be going up and to there. Then once you do that, you are going to divide this into 12 divisions. The height or your pitch in 12 divisions. So let's say, how do we divide the pitch in 12 divisions? From here you can draw a line going that way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, you know, 12. Connect the last one with that one. So it's the same method of dividing a line, but make sure you show the examiner you are using this method, and I'm using green for construction. Then, I think I'll try to remove one. Let's take out this one. Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, okay? 12. Then these divisions, take them this side horizontally. Obviously, they are equally spaced. You take them that way. We are saying 12 divisions. Yeah. The next thing is to divide this circle here in uh, six divisions. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Draw uh, vertical lines. Make sure that these are all construction lines. And the start is here. Because it's right hand helix. So you are starting here. And then to start uh, you know, getting the points. What you are going to do. You need to know. That to get this. You need to know the angle. That angle is coming here. From the center here where we are starting. Draw a line, which is a, a, an angle. This line that you have drawn, if you do it, don't do it that way. Okay? Because what it means when I draw a line here, it's a clearance angle of the thread. It means that one is to go up to get this line here. Then there's no need of doing this if we do it that way. Don't come and divide the pitch from this side. I must explain nicely. Work it that way. Pi times diameter. Then you have the height, then where the height ends, connect this 
and this angle should be the clearance angle of the thread. Some of them are lower, some of them are higher. So where one hits there, it brings here. For two to here, it brings there. Three, it's like you went there, you know, you got this. So you can change the angle nicely. It's like that. Then you go to four, it brings you there to the division. Five to that division. You go to six to that division. This one to that division. You go to 45. Make sure that you are going to the 45 line. This one to the 45. If it's 45 degrees, you use 45. Okay? And to the last one. So let's say this is the last one. Like that. What we are saying is draw this angle from corner to corner. Where the two lines are meeting. It's a, a square or a rectangular block. Alright. So what I'll do. Let me just draw... This is a cylinder, and this is the pitch. So division one on, on that angle, bring it here. Division two on the angle, bring it here. Three on the line, bring it here. We are not using the one below. We are using this one here, the one above. So you can ignore this bottom line. Yeah, something like that. Please make sure you get what I'm saying here. I'm saying one, two, three. One, when it hits there, you bring it here. Two, when it hits there, you bring it here. Three, when it hits there, bring here. Four, when it hits there, bring here. And so forth until number 12. Okay? So I've got those divisions there, which must be equally spaced. This is a freehand sketch, so you can't see nicely. Then you start marking. Where division one here, this is one, two. Three, four, five. So this one starts here. The next line with the next line. Horizontal line with a vertical line. Here. Vertical line with horizontal line. There. Center line with the third one. This one with the next one. This one with this one. Then that one. Then it starts turning. Obviously from here to there. To there. You can see the points that you take. And to the last one there. That is one revolution. If they want two pitches, then you need to have a copy again and do the same and have a 45 here. But this is for one pitch. If it's two, then it's a copy again, the way we did there. So the next thing is to plot the profile. It's going to be outer line in the front. This is solid, you can see. At the back, it's hidden details. When it's turning, you won't be able to see the back part of the thread. Hidden details. Done. That's how we do the helix. If it's a left hand, I would have started here, going to the left, and I would have drawn the line here and the angle there, so that we're bringing things like that. Then P would have started here, would have started there, and would have come here, then hidden lines. So what determines the direction is whether it's right or it is left hand helix. We are done. Go through past papers. Revise as much as you can. Send the drawings to me if you have got any questions or doubts. We need 100% pass rate. Alright. I'm finished with everything on the low key which is only 15 marks. It depends how you're going to approach the exam. Either start with the low key, start with the easiest one. I know the low key becomes complicated, but the, the marks are not too much. So focus on those with more marks and then come to the low key. Because low key is 15 marks and, you know, just complicated somehow. Especially if they give you cycloid with epicycloid. It takes ta a, quite some time to finish. All right. Please watch the video, take time, repeat, pause, ask questions later on or tomorrow or any other day if there's any questions. Other than that, I'll see you then next week for questioning if there will be any questions or we can do some revisions here and there. Yeah. So I think from me, I'm done. Until next time, bye-bye.